here and uh, I, I had such a, a uh, Manasse, Manasse uh, always talk about you John uh, Nak, uh, Nakamatsu and say, you have to meet this pianist man he's fantastic <laughs> and, all that. and then I, I received the commission to write the piece for the uh, the Cape Cod uh, Chamber Music Festival tell, tell us something about the festival because you are kind of a musical uh, artistic director of that festival right still is happening it's it's still happening yeah we, we started in 2007 as the artistic directors which means that we basically do the planning for this festival that's been going on for over 40 years uh it lasts four weeks in august and one of the things that we always wanted to do as artistic directors is commission new pieces and you know one of our goals as a duo was to commission pieces that would stay in the rep for piano and clarinet or at least for clarinet um, and something and uh, so you know it was kind of a no-brainer when John started talking about you and and you know the possibilities there and so we kind of wedded that to the to the cape and then came out with this uh, commission and uh, a piece was born and and thankfully so that, that's uh, well I never had the uh, oh, oh uh, there it is <laughs> I've never had the chance to tell you thank you very much for commissioning me to play that piece because uh, uh, Manasse is one of my favorite clarinet players and when he mentioned you uh, I uh, I immediately realized why he was talking about you so much <laughs> it was a perfect match you know uh, and uh, I had so much fun because the place is beautiful too the Cape Cod place Absolutely. Yeah. it's really nice and uh, play, playing that uh, you know watching you playing the piece that I wrote for you and, and I think it was even the, the uh, celebration of Benny Goodman's centenary, right? That's right. Yeah. You, you, I'll tell you, Paquito, you, you gave the world an incredible gift. I mean, we're, John and I are incredibly grateful that we, we sort of encouraged you to, uh, you know, bring this piece to fruition. We had no idea. We knew it was going to be fantastic. But this piece, as you know, since it was... I mean, my gosh, when was it? 2009. Okay. Already? This piece has taken on a life of its own, Paquito. You know that. 
it, everybody's playing it. People, oh, yeah. you know, students play it. They, everyone's in love with this piece. And every- I, I should send you a commission for that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, but you know, the, the situation with the COVID and all that, you know, it's hard for me. <laughs> no, I, I don't need any commission. I just, need to keep getting invited to your parties when they start up again. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> you got it. And oh. we, have, we have to be in uh, uh, Nakamatsu also for the next party. Oh, that would be great. Oh, I love it. And then we, we would mix some, some black beans and rice with sushi. How is that? Yeah, that's excellent. Perfect. <laughs> Fantastic. Now There is a guy in our community that we love very much, which is Dave Gould. Oh, yeah, we all love Dave Gould. He, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very special, very good kind of player. He plays all the, ba the bass and the, and the, uh, uh, the alto and the other, uh, that other thing, you know, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, basset, the basset horn. <laughs> he plays all those. And I, I uh, once he, talk, he called me and he said, I love that beat that you wrote for Manasseh very much. Say, yeah, I am very happy that you like it. He said, I have a proposition. You want to orchestrate it? He said, what? I never heard of that. You want me to orchestrate my own piece? He said, yeah, I want you. Wow, and I got some money here. It's not a lot of money, but I got something for <laughs> to, to make some enthusiasm come out of you. No, I am enthusiastic anyway. I want to write a piece. <laughs> and uh, what I love about that commission is that the 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 orchestra uh, the orchestration gave me the opportunity to to let Nakamatsu play more his piano because he got to be accompanying mo most of the time in the in the sonata because uh, you know the solo is the clarinet he said it's a it's a sonata for clarinet and piano but this is a concerto for the clarinet the piano and then the orchestra is taking the place of the piano so that was so much fun and. Uh, we have to thank David Gould for that. Well, you, you know, Paquito, you're right. Um, we have to thank David Gould and Van Doren. Van Doren, yes. Van Doren, they, they really, um, you know, they have our back all the time and, and they're enthusiastic about, uh, you know, supporting new music and new commissions. Uh, and 
uh, we are really grateful to them. They, they made this happen. And, um, you know, I look forward to anything else that we can do together. Um, well, yeah, yes, I, I feel like really, uh, I start writing something else for you guys too again, because it's, uh, the duet is so fantastic. And uh, the spirit with the orchestra was great, with the San Jose <laughs> Orchestra. And uh, the spirit without Usher, you know, we say, go to your shit. <laughs> <laughs> And the, wonderful, and the wonderful experience at, 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 the, uh, at the Cape Cod. No, I'll, I'll tell you what, this, this, this points to how special you are. Because at the time we did this commission, if you remember, it was in 2008. Um, and that was the stock market crashing. People, people didn't have money, but the entire community came together and many, many people put in money to support this commission. So this is really, this piece is really owned initially by the, Cape, by the community at Cape Cod. And it was, it was very meaningful to us to see how it wasn't one person, two people, it was like at least 20 people who, who got together and wanted this to happen at one of the most difficult financial times ever. So that's a testament to you. And, and also to the Cape Cod Chamber Music Festival, you know, how much they, they love and support great music and new music and chamber music. Wonderful group of people there. Yes, this, this piece has, as you know, it's taken on a life of its own. Paquito de Rivera, who he himself is a great clarinetist and saxophonist, wrote a wonderful piece for the Cape Cod Chamber Music Festival's 30th anniversary called the Cape Cod Files, and it's a four movement work that Paquito sort of celebrates his musical heroes. When I met with him to go over the music, he says, hey, John, I didn't write this for you. I wrote it against you, <laughs> which is a, an ongoing joke about it because it's, it, there are a lot of technical demands and you know, I guess he thought he'd throw some curveballs. Um, and it's been a, a great joy to play that piece for audiences all over the world. Thank you. 
It's music that really speaks to any culture. It's fun, it's exhilarating, it's uplifting, and I'm so grateful that it's part of the mainstream repertoire now. Um, do we need to tell, retell that story about the premiere with the usher? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, you know, we, we, can, we can talk about that. I remember when the premiere with the uh, orchestra version happened, you asked me to play the clave, but you remember better than what happened there because, I, I, okay, we will play the clave with you, but let's see how we do this. <laughs> well, I, well I, you know, since you... I remember preparing this piece and actually John Nakamoto and I came to your house and we played through, you know, just to get your feedback, because as you know, you gave us the score, you put nothing in it except the notes. Yeah. I said, Paquito, you're talking to a, a classical clarinet player who loves jazz. I need a little more than that. So I came to your house. And, no, no, it's great. You do what you want. Okay. So you taught me in that uh, Lequinarius movement that or uh, the, the, the clave stop yeah and and so you were doing that as i was playing playing that movement so i had an idea since it was for orchestra why don't we have someone in the percussion section play the claves and something to play that rhythm. He said, okay, good idea. For the orchestra version, you'll write it in. You wrote it in. The percussion player, you know, he wasn't as comfortable in that idiom, but since you were there, I said, hey, Kito, you're here. Why don't you sit in the audience? When we get to that movement, hear the claw bass. Just start playing along with me if you feel like it. I'll come to the edge of the stage. Maybe I'll meet you some. So we get to that movement. We get to that section in the movement. I start playing. From my memory, you start playing the claves in the hall. You get up out of your seat to walk, to meet me at the edge of the stage. And an usher grabs you and says, hey, man, you got to go. <laughs> Who's this crazy guy walking down? He said, oh, oh sir, 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 go back to your seat. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was somebody, uh, there was a lady around there that he said, he's the composer. <laughs> yeah, but he had to go back to his head. <laughs> John, do you remember that? I do remember that. Yeah, that was yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, those things that happened in the stage, you know, that you know, unforgettable. I'll tell you something. You know, 
when I, I have a lot of students who learn that movement now, and I say, you have to have it memorized. They say, why do you have to have it memorized? I said, because you don't know Paquito might show up and you have to walk into the hall and play for him. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. You, you know, you know why I, uh, now I am doing a little more, but when I, when I write for soloists, for brilliant soloists, I don't write all, all the articulations or, or, unless I want something very specific. But I, I live, I am used to, you know, as you said before, I am used to work in jazz groups and all that. So you put the paper and then the articulation and everything else comes spontaneously. And you give the soloist the opportunity to express that, to interpret the, uh, the piece according to their taste. You know that Mozart didn't write too, too many uh, uh, articulations or, 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 or even uh, uh, dynamics in the Mozart music for, for soloists and all that. Maybe he had the same idea to give the, 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 uh, the soloist the opportunity to do whatever they want, you know, to adapt his music to do their own style. Paquito, I love that you said that because as you know, Mozart and Beethoven, these guys were fantastic improvisers. Oh yeah, 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 I'm back too. And um, yeah, so I mean, at first, when, when, when you look at the music, if you're not really familiar with that idiom, um, you want more information as, as, as a performer. Yeah, 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 I know. And, and so how do you get that information? It's better to listen to more Paquita de Rivera recordings and people who you better to listen to Ernesto Lecuona, better to listen, to listen to Benny Goodman, because what you did with that piece, which is fantastic, is you paid homage to all of your heroes. Yeah. You well, know, I, actually, actually, the the uh, the the introduction, uh, I developed the first movement in, as an introduction that that Benny Goodman improvised on on memories of, of you. And, that's right. So I, I took that impro and, and, and developed. You but, sure did. Hmm? But that, that information is, is very important for students, for people learning it for the first time. And actually, I tell that to audiences all the time before I start that piece. John and I play a little bit of Memories of You. Ah, that's a great idea. And 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 people love it. They make that connection. Um, and they can really hear how you did a variation on it. And as you very appropriately put, you only took a few notes to not infringe on copyright. <laughs> <laughs> And you know that that is not not even copyrighted because that, that is just an an intro that you improvise. That is not part of the song. Do you know that I remember many years ago I was in a in a party at BMI with the great Antonio Carlos Jobim, the, the, the Brazilian composer, and I have a a, a, a doubt about a, a note. In one of his most famous pieces, which is a uh, uh, Corcovado, Quiet Night, Quiet Night, and then he was sitting on a very large piano. It was a big boss in I said, "Hey Tom, is that B flat or B natural?" He played boom, and he said, "Play whatever you want. They pay me anyway." <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. I think I had a question like that for you in your piece, and, and you basically told me the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's great. And uh, I hope very soon we can get together again.
Paquito, I have one question for you before we leave about the piece, the Cape Cod Files. So the first piece is an homage to Benny Goodman, Benny at 100. Yeah. The second one is to uh, Astor Piazzolla Bandonion. The the third, right. Third one is for Ernesto Lecuona. Can you talk about the last Chiquita Blues? I love that movement. But you said this, this was a cabaret singer who was about this tall. Yes, I'm all this tall. It's amazing. In the, uh, I, can, I, I even have a picture of, of, of that woman. There is a, a, a Orlando, I don't remember the second name of, of the, uh, the writer, but uh, it's a Cuban writer who lives in, uh, uh, in Miami or something <laughs> for a change. A Cuban writer who lives in Miami for, <laughs> for a change. Yeah, it's like a Chinese guy who lives in Peking or something. <laughs> Well, he wrote a wonderful novel. A friend of mine said, you have to read this novel. It's called Chiquita. Chiquita was the, the way, uh, Chiquita in, in, in Spanish means pequeña, little, Chiquita. Her name was, was uh, uh, Espiridona Facenda. I had a, a very strange name. And she become a very famous uh, performer, a vedette. Very successful with that in New York City at the end of the 19th century. And she was very successful in, in love also, in romances and all that. I wonder how, how she managed to do that. <laughs> but well, and, and in the book, don't say too many, too, too many details either. But I feel inspired on that novel to write a piece which is a combination. Well, she was a Cuban from Matanzas, from the Matanzas city. Uh, then I tried to do a combination of Cuban music and the American blues, because she was very successful in New Orleans first, and then in New York City, and then in the entire country. So it's a, it's a, it's a combination of, of uh, Cuban music. <laughs> The sequence is, is a blues changes with the Cuban rhythm. So it's a tribute to, to, to the writer, Orlando, and uh, Chiquita, which is, was uh, a successful Cuban vedette or <laughs> the size of a current name. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Thank you for that information. So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a biography, basically, that you read about Chiquita. Is that right? It's not a biography. This guy, a very interesting book. It's a fantastic, and I think it's, it's in English too. This writer visited another writer who was in a in a in the nursing home. A very old writer who was almost dying. He was in his, you know the last his last day, and he said, "I have a, a box, a cardboard box, full of." investigation that I did years ago about this woman. So there is some information about her. Uh, I don't remember if it's complete or not. I see. So he went, this is for you. He gave, he gave the, uh, the, uh, all those papers to, to this writer, Orlando. I remember the second name. And like a week later, he died. So he started uh, reading all that interesting information, but was incomplete. And then he created the novel. That's he, got, he got the basic information about Chiquita. And then having, having the, the general information, he constructs the whole uh, uh, story of the... Uh, so it's, it's half true and half fiction. That's what it is. But it's a wonderful story. And I am very happy that I, I make it uh, in, in composition to two of my favorite musicians. <laughs>
kind of alluded to it earlier, you know, you, you have to, the hardest part about making this music work is the style, you know, so that you, you, you feel like if you're a classical uh, performer predominantly that, that you don't sound like a classical guy trying to, you know, play music that is not your, your style. So I think the one thing that I had to do was listen to recordings, you know, to listen to Paquito, to listen to Benny Goodman, to listen to uh, Laquorna. Uh, so things that help me figure out what the style is, because there's a certain, I don't want to say ease, but as hard as the music can be, it sounds like nothing when, when it's done well. It sounds so natural. And that's what, that's what, I think was the biggest challenge for me to, to, to not be nervous about it and to not be uptight about every note and to just figure out, well, how am I gonna make it sound like it's just floating off of, my, off of the page and not printed? Because I think to, to Paquita's point, you know, it's written down, but it's not supposed to sound like it's written down. It's supposed to sound like it just is evolving of the moment. And, and so um, John, clarinet John, you, you had a lot more experience with this than I did just in terms of improvisation and, and, and things like that. And so, you know, things that you would tell me and I, I, all of these things were so helpful and, and it was fun, but it was, it was definitely a challenge. You know, it's not like uh, playing something where the realization of that comes from actually just doing exactly what's on the score. In fact, sometimes you wanted to do what's not on the score. And that's, that was fun. It's, it's great. And I think each time I look at this score, I, I kind of see it in a different way too. So. You, you know, you know, uh, John, like you surprised me, especially not, not, not that much with the first movie, but the last movement that pa -pa 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 but it is, is so, uh, so sharply uh, uh, articulated and you nail it at once. So always I said, you don't have to be Austrian to play Mozart. <laughs> all, all you need is some, well, of course, some dedication, but I mean, some, some, some talent. But you cannot, anyone can understand the music of, 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 of any other, other part, you know, and you nail it that Montuno at the end. I, I didn't feel that, like uh, uh, you came just straight from the classical uh, school. Because music is just one, like 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 uh, you can even say there is only two kind of music, good and the other stuff. <laughs> so cool. learning different styles is is great, and and you did it really fine. So I am ready. I am my pen ready to start writing the next one. Okay, well I'll do better <laughs> next time. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I, I doubt it. <laughs> well, yeah, John and John, I am so happy that we have the uh, the opportunity to talk to you. All yeah. right, hope to see you very soon. Thank, Thank you, Paquito. You know, happy happy birthday. birthday.
no reason my game, game got files and, and we can know that without talking about Dave Gould because uh, you came later with the idea to orchestrate the piece. I was so surprised, you know, because I, I wrote this piece for as a commission for John, John Manasse and John Nakamatsu, the wonderful uh, uh, pianist. And uh, well, we premiered the piece and all that. And then you, uh, I arranged a little bit for you to play the bandoni on the second movement for the- uh, Bass clarinet. For the bass clarinet. And then suddenly you you like you like the piece of money. They said, we have a little budget from uh, from uh, Van Doren, and we, we want you to orchestrate that. And I was so happy. <laughs> this is this is a case of being at the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, if I remember right, um, it's a while ago, but if I remember right, we were talking about. Uh, this piece and then I think maybe even John came up with the idea someone had the idea to make it a concerto as opposed to just uh, for clarinet and piano and obviously to do things like that it costs money and <clears throat> it was a huge hit I mean a double concerto with clarinet and piano I, you know whoever heard of such a thing and and thanks to you that exists and the Cape Cod files is in the concerto it's Remarkable. I mean, it it works beautifully with orchestra. I mean, like, you know, well, some of these things might be better almost. Yeah, yeah. You know that it gave me the opportunity to give more space to this wonderful Japanese uh, pianist, uh, Nakamatsu, yep. because because you know that uh, the 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 main the the main function of the of the pianist in the sonata was to accompany the solo, the clarinet. Right. But you, you gave me the opportunity to give more space, especially for for the piano, you know. To, sure. Thanks to David Good, I, I wrote all those pieces and, and the people are playing. And and don't worry, we'll get you writing more too. <laughs> Promise. Very good. And I, and I love when you ask me to arrange for you the second movement of the bandonion. How, how it work? Oh, it's amazing. It fits the, the bass clarinet perfectly. Um, and I remember we were talking about this. I asked for some instruction about it and you told me not too fast. You said so many people play it too fast. And yeah. uh, that was something that really stuck with me. And, it, and it, it really becomes something else if you really take time and let it breathe. Uh, it's, a, it's a magnificent work. And, and honestly, I think it's, it stands alone. I mean, there's you know, other great movements, of course, to the to the, the piece and, and or the concerto, but uh, I think the slow move, the Vendonion really, I just, it, it's just beautiful. And it's, it's, it's Paquito de Rivera, really, is really what it is. It's a tribute to Astro Piazzolla also. The, the, that and the entire, the entire uh, uh, Cape Cod Files or Cape Cod Concerto, there is a tribute to four, four uh, people, a, a, com a comedian and a vedette, a bandonion player, which is Astor Piazzolla, and of course, Benny Goodman, and, and, uh, and also uh, Leto Lecona, the, the national composer of Cuba. But the bandonion is a, when I say don't play too fast, because it's a, it's a nostalgic memoir of Astor Piazzolla. It's, it's hard to play a dance air uh, slow because you can you have to keep the rhythmic power but don't rush so you have to enjoy every beat boom boom boom, boom. and i think the recording you did is really fantastic oh, thank you <laughs> cool like i can i can't wait to get together with you and uh, and uh, to to ride in one of those crazy cars of yours yes the, the, the 19 the 1911 Cadillac. It runs. It sounds great. We'll do that as soon as we uh, as soon as we can get together. And thank you for commissioning those pieces. And uh, I hope to see you personally soon. Well, thank you for all you do. <laughs> Thank you. 